This is Nissan in game live. Ray Dittinger, Michael Barkan. It says right here, 16 to 7, the Eagles trail the Washington football team. I'll tell you what, I don't care if you're watching this game in Philadelphia, you're watching it in South Jersey, or you're Larry Gregory and Joey Baum in Sag Harbor, New York. You got to be pissed, Ray Dittinger. Can you believe this? Again, they fall behind and trail at halftime. And guess what? I knew this was going to happen. You don't get shellacked by a Dallas Cowboys team, 56 to 14, and then just say, okay, season's over. If you're professional, if you're man about it, you step up to the plate, which is what Washington has done. Eagles need to follow suit. Yeah, um, you're right. I mean, they had um, different things can affect people different ways. I mean, they had a 50 burger dropped on them by Dallas last week. Um, and sometimes the team, at, if that happens late in the season, I've, Sometimes teams quit. You know, they just say, that's it. You know, we're done. And um, I think sometimes that ties in if they know the coach is going to get fired and they figure it's all, you know, what's the point? Well, I don't think they think Ron Rivera is going to get fired. Uh, and if there was any pride on this team, you know, they summoned it up this week. But I think it was, as we said in the pregame show, I think it was really important for the Eagles to come out and right from the jump of the game take control of the game. You know, take your, your first possession, take it down, score, get a lead. Uh, and at some point at that point, you, you might see the Washington, you know, the air start coming out of the balloon, and at halftime you might have the game in hand. The Eagles did just the opposite. I mean, they let Washington take the ball and march it right down the field and score easy on their first possession, and all of a sudden they've got, they've got a little life. And now here you are at halftime. Um, you know, Taylor Heineke looks like – you know, looks Joe like, Montana. looks like Joe Montana, Joe Theismann, and Joe Cap all rolled into one. Um, I mean, I think, I think at one point, the last time I saw, I think he was 14 for 16. Um, and again, I'm going to come back to this. This to me is 17. a this is just a you know kind of a Jonathan Gannon issue. I, I don't know why he insists on playing this soft zone defense. And let's you know let's these quarterbacks just have all these easy throws and you know build some drive. I mean, they've had four possessions. They've scored on all of them. Is Washington offense that prolific? I don't think so. I think you're making them look a lot better than they are. Yeah, I agree with you, Ray. When you look at what Washington did, and you just mentioned it, six plays in three minutes, six seconds to start the game, and I thought, here we go again. And believe it or not, the Eagles have not trailed as many times at halftime as we might like to think. Certainly, uh, they were tied with Washington in the first game between the teams on December 21st. No Taylor Heineke in that game. No. And, and he's looked pretty good. you got to give it to him. But that, there, there's a soft zone. Also, how about bringing an extra rusher every now and again? They have uh, on a couple of occasions. Uh, got home a couple times. And then a couple times, you do have to give Heineke his due. I mean, there were a couple times that he had pressure right in his face and was getting ready to take a hit and got rid of the ball and turned what could have been a big negative play into a first down play. So, yeah, I mean, he has, he has played well. But I think the way the Eagles' defense is playing right now has, has allowed him to be so. I mean, you look at what Washington is offensively coming into the year. They are really a team with very few offensive weapons. I mean, Antonio Gibson was their best running back all year. Well, he's not available to them now. Uh, so they're playing this rookie, Patterson, who is not even a draft pick. I mean, he's basically a walk-on. Uh, and he's played very well at first. If Wendell Smallwood, who's an Eagles cast-off, yeah. has come in and gotten them a couple first downs. I mean, every time they get into a third down situation, it's always third and makeable, and they're able to convert them. And, you know, four possessions, four points on the board. I mean, that's, you know, I, I mean, the Eagles have to really reassess here. I mean, this is, this is no joke. I mean, 16-7, you know, you got, a, you got some work to do here coming out in the second half. Now, are the Eagles the better team? Sure. I don't think there's any question they're the better team, but they haven't played like it through 30 minutes. 16-7 could have been 16-10. They, they went for it on fourth down of their initial possession. Would you have? And then they did so again in the red zone and got a touchdown out of it. Would you have done that? I would have taken the points. Early in, game, or early in games, I, philosophically, that's where I am on that. Early in games, I want to take the points. You know, just give, give me the points. If we're, if we're, they weren't quite in the red zone, but they are right on the fringe of it. They were around the 25. It's an easy field goal. It's a chip shot for Elliott. I'd take it. I'll yeah. take the points and go from there. But, you know, Nick Sirianni's trying to take the aggressive tact here. And I, I think that there was something to be said for wanting to be aggressive, you know, and, and take control of the game. And, but that, to me, is a tougher call. I mean, right there, I would have taken the three points and been happy with it. But right now, you know, they put themselves in a hole, and now they're going to have to dig their way out of it. Mm -hmm. What would you change with regard to 
the Eagles' offense because they, they have a very balanced attack, at least so far. You look at 13 runs, I including Jalen Hurts running three times, and 12 called passes. Yeah, um, they have been. Uh, I would – there's – yeah, I, I would like to. I, w I would really like to see Hertz under center more. I, I th that to me, they're they're really kind of locking themselves into that shotgun, shotgun, shotgun mode that they're in before. And I, I just don't see enough diversity here. I don't see enough. I, I don't see enough variety in their play calling. They're not using enough motion. They're not using enough formations. There's a lot more in the playbook than they're going to. And I, I just you know that bothers me. And you know one of the things that bothered me and Seth and I were talking about this on the first drive. Was the first drive they're clicking right along, they're moving the ball really good, and then they call that jet sweep to Jalen Rager. Yeah, that winds up as a n minus yard. Got to force play. him in there. Yeah, and it's it just seems so obvious that there's that there's this dictum that's coming down from somewhere that somewhere in the first hmm. series the, we got to make sure that we get the ball to Jalen Rager. You know, we got to make sure we get you get him involved. Why? Yeah. You know, I mean, everything was working well. You run that jet sweep. All of a sudden now. You're, my, you're behind the sticks, you're third and 12, and that's when the drive stalls. I, you know, I, to me, they had a nice rhythm going, and they just called a play just for the sake of getting it to Jalen Rager. They do that way too much. Lastly, it's 16-7 at half. You, Seth, and myself were discussing this right before you and I came down here. If the Eagles do not call timeout at the end of the half, they're only losing 13-7, not 16-7. And in a game where every little tiny point counts, you want to be losing by 13-7 and not 16-7. What do you think about about doing that, trying to freeze you, the kicker? You you only hope that those three points don't come back and haunt you at the end. But And, you know, we've seen the Eagles struggle in the first half way too often. I mean, it's, it's become a real pattern now. And it's something that's a habit they got to break. But they've always been able to come back in the second half. They certainly did it the last time they played Washington. They didn't play good in the first half. And then they came back and blew them away in the second half. Maybe they'll do that again today. But – this coming from behind kind of thing, I mean, it's something that if they're really going to go to the playoffs and have an idea of advancing in the playoffs, they're not going to be able to play this way against the better teams. All right, here's what we've got coming up for you rest of the day. Seth Joyner is going to join you after the third quarter. Joyner joins you. You get it. And then when the clock hits zero, we're back television side on NBC Sports Philadelphia with Eagles post game live. Ray Dittinger, Barrett Brooks, Seth Joyner. We'll hear from Nick Sirianni, Jalen Hurts, Fletcher Cox. Any particulars of uh, in this game today? All that coming your way on NBC Sports Philadelphia. Enjoy the second half.